Vielleicht doch gut. Ja, ja. Da gehört nicht. Okay, the part pushing the lottery. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. Hello. Hi, Jigil. Hi. Can you hear me well? Can you hear me well? Yes, I can. Okay. That's yes. fine. All right. So, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Kinzong from Australia Tibet Council. Uh, Welcome to our online series of um, shows that we have been doing over the past uh, month or so, uh, you know, during this time, uh, as we celebrate Tibetan culture, Tibetan food, Tibetan music with you all, you know, while we are all staying at home. Um, so tonight we have a very uh, special guest. Uh, a dear friend of mine, uh, Tenzin Chuegel. Uh, many of you will know Chuegel very well uh, through his music. And so I'm delighted to be hosting this very special event uh, with Tenzin Chuegel. We are here uh, tonight uh, for two things, but before we begin that, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we are meeting tonight uh, and pay my respect to elders past and present. Uh, I want to acknowledge that the political and the moral consequences of the violence that has been committed um, on the indigenous people of this land uh, 200 years ago still remains unresolved. So as, as Tibetans, we want to stand in solidarity with your struggle for uh, self-determination. Um, so uh, welcome uh, once again. Uh, for those of you who are just uh, joining in, uh, we are doing this very special online event with uh, Tibetan musician Tenzin Chuegel tonight. This is part of our online series that we have been doing over the past one month to share Tibetan culture and food and music uh, with our friends and supporters uh, in Australia and around the world who are you know, all going through this um, difficult time. Uh, so I hope you have been enjoying uh, our shows. And tonight we have um, a very special guest, Denzin Chuegel, here. So our initial plan uh, was to host a very you know, special online concert with Chuegel. Um, 
And unfortunately, there has been a small change of plan, and I hope that you won't mind too much. The thing is, you know, while we were testing uh, this live streaming, uh, we are hosting this event on this platform called Jeans, Blue Jeans, and you know, while moving from Blue Jeans uh, to Facebook live streaming, somehow the voice quality of the music, uh, you know, gets very badly compromised. There is no way that we can have a very smooth concert doing this live streaming from Blue Jeans platform to Facebook. Um, so we have decided uh, to kind of expand the scope of this event and to to have a conversation with Chugil. You know, all of us appreciate Chugil's music very much, uh, but tonight we thought, you know, maybe we can explore, you know, a bit of his musical journey. You know, talk about the stories behind his music. And um, so, yes, Chugil, if you don't mind, you know, we'll try if we can play a song or two. Uh, but if not, uh, we will have a conversation with you. Uh, and so we call this event Songs and Stories of Tibet in conversation with Dinzin Chugil. So welcome. Welcome to uh, Songs and Stories of, uh, of Tibet. Uh, I am delighted to be having this conversation with you. And tonight, um, the other special event uh, that we are hosting uh, tonight is, is the launch of ATC's online auction. Uh, you know, because of the coronavirus crisis, uh, so many groups and businesses and individuals have really suffered, you know, very um, severe economic hardships. And um, and and of course, you know, groups like Australia Tibet Council is one of them. You know, we rely heavily on our supporters. We are 100% community funded, which means our work is, you know, funded by uh, individual supporters who care about Tibet and who want, you know, meaningful action on Tibet. Um, and because of this situation, a lot of our, um, you know, fundraising activities have to be cancelled or postponed. Um, and as a result, we thought maybe we can do a quick online auction for Tibet. And this is what we are doing today. This morning, we launched our online auction. Um, so I just want to say, you know, thank you to everyone who has donated. Uh, their lovely uh, items to the uh, online <coughs> auction. So, um, so we'll do both. We will have a conversation with Chugil, and as part of that, um, we will also have, you know, talk about the auction, the online auction. And for those of you watching online, um, uh, please visit our website, atc.org.au. Uh, you will also see that uh, comment the link to the auction site uh, in the comments section. So if you check the comments section, you will see the link. Uh, so please uh, take time to visit that online auction while we were having this conversation. Um, so, so, so Chugel, I would like to start um, this conversation with you. Um, so um, just just want to check in with you. How have you been? You know, you have been. I know you traveled uh, to the U.S. and had to come back, uh, and since then you have been, you know, in in, in basically in lockdown. <laughs> so, uh, just how are you doing? Uh, how first of all, uh, first of all, uh, many many greetings to everyone out there, um, and hopefully you all are safe and uh, taking care of yourself and all the beings around you. Um, so talk about to talk about this um initially actually i was in new york the other month um like in march mid march i was actually about to do a very huge show uh called the white lama which was supposedly uh was about to open the premiere show was about to open on 13th of march uh, with Philip Glass, and I've been working with him for this show for last two years. And then on the night of the dress rehearsal, the <clears throat> Annenberg director in Philadelphia came along and then he said, um, 
we are cancelling all the shows. So we only I only got to do the dress rehearsal and then <clears throat> then straight away after the dress rehearsal, which went really beautifully, uh, everyone was like overjoyed with it. But having to cancel everything, I realized that I had lost all my upcoming events for the next six months. And then also like New York was kind of locking itself down, everything was shutting down. So I had to very quickly uh, find a flight back home. And um, so I had to stay in New York for three days more. And then when I got back, I was in self-isolation for two weeks, which was actually great because it was around that time where in the self-isolation uh, when I started to reimagine the festival of Tibet. And that's when I actually organized the whole 10 days festival of Tibet, um, which went online and went really well. So, I mean, sometimes I think we get disappointed by things that are unknown to you coming, coming, coming towards you. But then uh, how you turn that disappointment into a positive thing uh, was a challenge and uh, which, which was hugely gratifying as well. And to see how many people out there are really looking forward to <clears throat> stories of Tibet. And, uh, you know, like, so it was really good. Um, and I'm fine, uh, the coronavirus, uh, I mean, it has restricted the physical being of us, but I think the mental being of us can be like the sky, so with no limits and without any position. So, you know, like you can, you can expand your mind and be creative and, uh, so in that way, I think um, it was kind of like a, what is that called? For an artist, you know, like a lot of the time you go do residencies to do your workshops. So it became like a artist in residence <laughs> at my own home in my garage. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, that was um, yeah, that was great. Uh, sorry, were you saying something? Yeah, so in in that way, I think if if we can expand, like what you are doing right now, like like Australia Tibet Council is doing right now, like sometimes when we can't, um, when something stops, then you find another way to channel the. Uh, and also, you know, like for each and each individual, especially each Tibetans, we have the responsibility to keep the Tibet story, um, whether it, whether we are in lockdown or we are, whether we are out there physically doing something out in the world, it doesn't matter. Um, that that one i think it's important for us to be aware and um so i was just doing a little bit of my responsibility in that way i guess yeah that was beautiful um and i really um admired the way uh how, you know you you turned this difficult um you know situation into something very positive you know, yeah. you, so I want to congratulate you on a very successful festival of Tibet, um, and and I think you know the festival um, is is a, you know the outcome um, that you got with this online uh, festival of Tibet. It's really um, a result uh, of your um, of your creativity. Um, and love and of course the hard work you put into your craft uh, so really admired you for that and want to congratulate you and Thank so you. for those 
you uh, who are uh, just coming in, uh, welcome to, to Songs and Stories uh, in Conversation with Denzin Chögel. Um, tonight, we were supposed to be having an online concert with Denzin Chögel. However, uh, you know, because of the technical um, difficulty, you know, live streaming from this video conferencing platform, to Facebook, uh, it's not easy to play music and do this, you know, um, transition from this online platform to Facebook. Uh, so we are having more of a conversation and hopefully uh, Tenzin Chögel can play a song or two. Um, so many of you will know Tenzin Chögel, uh, you know, um, a Tibetan musician who has, um, let's say, um, you know, taken his music to uncharted territories um, and, and, you know, he is one of the, you know, most, uh, successful or inspiring cultural ambassadors of, you know, exile, uh, Tibetans, um, now living in the West. Uh, and, and so, um, so yes, tonight we are just having this conversation with Shurgil and I want to ask you a few things because as a Tibetan, you know, um, I've really enjoyed your music and, and just, and when we decided to have this conversation with you, I was kind of reflecting back on, you know, when I first heard your music, because, you know, I, as you know, I've been a fan of your music for more than a decade. And I remembered actually the first time I heard your music uh, was back in 2007. And it was at um, His Holiness of the Dalai Lama's uh, teachings in Sydney when he visited Australia in 2007. So, mm. you know, he was at the Sydney, um, one of the big auditoriums in Sydney. Uh, I think it was in Homebush, if I'm not wrong. I think uh, so, yeah. Yes, it was uh, at the Olympic Park um, mm. or at the Sydney Exhibition Centre, one of these, you know, very huge entertainment centres. So during the break, I know you play music, um, you know, during the break. Um, yeah. And I was just, you know, taking a walk in that huge uh, entertainment center. And I remember hearing a very kind of a, you know, powerful voice, you know, music coming from the other end of the auditorium. You know, it was something, you know, beautiful, but in a very haunting way. So I wanted to follow that sound, and that's how I came to meet you. You know, I was in a totally different side of the auditorium, and I heard your yeah. music, and I said, I have to, you know, find out where that music is coming from. And yeah. so I came uh, to that area, you know, where all the artists and where all the, you know, groups were ho holding their uh, stalls, and you were there in the middle, you know, playing your damien, playing that song, and you were surrounded by this huge group of, you know, um, people who had come to attend uh, His Holiness's teachings and were taking a break. And mm. that was when I came to hear your music for the first time, and from that moment on, you know, I've been a huge fan uh, of that music. So I am really curious to know, you know, um, how how um, do you make your music? You know, what is who is your inspiration? What just curious to know. You know, wanted to ask you actually. Can you take us through, you know, your process of making this beautiful music? Yeah. Uh, so those were the fortunate times actually when His Holiness used to um, visit every second year to Australia, and uh, I used to be able to offer my songs uh, during his teachings. And um, and I I actually vividly remember meeting you uh, at that time, on that time. And uh, uh, one story that I really, I think keeping true to your own sound is very, um, like for an artist, I think keeping true to your sound is a very essential thing. And uh, when I was first offered when His Holiness, when I first got to do the offering of songs to His Holiness uh, during the teaching, I, it was a month ahead before the teaching and <laughs> I learned a traditional piece like at Nagma Thushe, and I was going to sing that in front of him and all the audiences. And then when I got on the stage, um, 
when I got on the stage, it felt like I was actually, um, what is that called? Cheating myself. Because normally I spontaneously write songs and spontaneously sing, sing my tunes. So instead of doing that Nagma Amaleo that I learned, I just made a, a spontaneous gesture of Heart Sutra. And I started singing that. And then since then, I think every concert now, I always start with Heart Sutra, uh, a spontaneous gesture of uh, offering the melody uh, of the Heart Sutra, and after the after when I got off the stage and <laughs> went backstage, and as his holiness was coming up on the stage, um, to and what happened was he patted my like as as you know like you would know he's so compassionate and so uh, beautiful and for us he's like the for me I mean especially he's my main guru and since a childhood. So he patted me and you, he said, uh, you, have a, you have a very beautiful voice, but what, it, what was in the lyrics? <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was actually singing the Heart Sutra and I, was, I took it as a, you know, like, a kind of like a little teaching. Go, I pro probably thought, go learn deeper into the, the meaning of the Heart Sutra. So, um, in my, as you asked, uh, where do I take inspiration for my music? I think the inspiration for my music is probably since my childhood, I used to, like, as I was growing up in Tibetan children's village, uh, which we both went to. Um, Remember, we used to have this booklet called Auto Book, where yes. you <laughs> where you write all your aims and you know like all the things that you want to do as when you grow up. And I I think I've never grown up from that time, anyways. But um, I used to write uh, uh, in aim. I used to write want to be a singer slash uh, a English teacher. And um, and then uh, and also my mom used to sing a lot. Um, as like my mom used when I go from school to Patlikul for holidays, my mother was a beautiful. She had a beautiful voice, and she, you know, like a lot of the elders, they whenever they cook, they sing and they sing their tunes and. And then whenever they wake up, like they wake up, like our elders used to wake up early in the morning, like four in the morning, and then like start chanting at the start of the morning. And uh, so I think all those sounds of the elders, so that's why I think when, when you hear my song, I think I, this is my purpose intentionally, what I do is, even though my sound is very contemporary, but you can hear a lineage in it. Like I intentionally make it so that, you know, there, there is a lineage of the Tibetan nomads in it. So um, you can, because my parents were Tibetan nomads and my father used to be a very, like a beautiful flute player. Uh, I w I've never seen him like uh, I've met he passed away when when I was very young so I can't really remember his face but I can remember his long hair and um, flute playing and then he there's a Tibetan uh, alcohol called Tongpa made from uh, millet uh, fermented millet so I remember those three things very vividly. And uh, so my inspirations were from my elders, but then now coming into like a world where there's more opportunities, uh, I made so many friends in the music industry. And then uh, 
uh, I started like collaborating with classical Indian musicians, jazz musicians, Western classical musicians, and even at times I've collaborated with punk musicians. So I think for me, music is life and music doesn't have a boundary. It, uh, it, uh, it transcends the geographical boundaries that human have created. Uh, so I sometimes describe, like sometimes people ask me, how would you describe your music? And I would say, it's like a floating cloud, you know, like in the sky, um, where it doesn't have, um, so that's why I would say, I'm pretty sure a lot of people, uh, like especially my Tibetan friends, they find it quite um, difficult to put me in a box because I don't, I'm not in the Tibetan pop music, neither in the totally, totally traditional music. And, but uh, I've been very fortunate that I've been able to collaborate with um, some, um, some of the amazing uh, artists around the globe, not only like sound wise, uh, in films, paintings, and like music can be included in all these art forms. So um, I've been really fortunate. Yeah, that's beautiful <laughs> how you, you know, put it together. Yeah, I was really um, going into that, you know, because I feel like you have, you know, channeled your um, spiritual lineage into your music. Yeah. Um, and as you said, you know, there's also a very strong kind of element of your nomadic um, background, you know, that is coming into play. But at the same time, you know, um, I find it hard to put you in a specific musical genre, you know, um, you know whether it's classical or Tibet, even in the Tibetan world, you know, we have either the pop or the rock or folk music. But I find it hard to, you know, place your music in one particular uh, genre and um, so I mean which in a way is the beauty of your music you know you have really managed to kind of push the boundaries of Tibetan music and you know while at the same time still kind of retaining your spiritual uh, tradition and um, so that's 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 yeah simply wonderful and you uh, briefly touched on the collaboration that you do I mean another powerful thing uh, with your music is how you kind of manage to collaborate uh, with people musicians from all you know backgrounds of all cultures and you seem to do it so kind of effortlessly so I'm really keen to know how you can kind of go into these musical worlds uh, you know with seemingly so little effort because I see you one day you know um, playing this huge uh, collaboration show with let's say uh, with a western classical uh, group uh, or with Philip Glass you know the world-renowned um, composer in New York um, and then on uh, the next day you are on the street in Kathmandu you know uh, playing or jamming with a local musician on the street uh, for instance or here in Australia you just you know meet uh, an indigenous Australian playing music and you jam with that person so it's just kind of amazing how you can you know um, go into all these worlds and still kind of retain that unique quality about your music. So yes, if you can touch a bit more on that, you know, how much effort goes into that? So for me, when I talk about music, I actually talk in terms of sound, like in Tibetan word, uh, yang. And uh, um, lu is like a song. And then young is sound, so I concentrate more more on the sound, and uh, and then when when you concentrate more on the sound, then there is like um, it's more inviting. You are not totally bound by. You have the tradition to back you up, uh, but at the same time you have this freedom to actually be the sky, which holds everyone. So in that way, I think uh, if you think like the music in that way, uh, in sound perspective, 
then you have more space for experimentation. And then also, um, uh, what is that called? Uh, I'm really, what is, like, like uh, the way I do music, actually you could probably um, bring in Kama's work, my friend, you know, Kama Pinzo. He, he, I, for, for me, he's like the father of Tibetan contemporary art. Um, he started collaborating, like, he started um, fusing the Tibetan traditional art form, um, which is like the, what is that called? The Tanka painting. He studied Tanka painting. And then in early 70s, like he started in early 70s. Now there are many Tibetan uh, contemporary artists now these days who are kind of using that similar medium. Um, so he, he transformed the whole iconography of Tibetan Tanka, you know, like he has actually kept the essence of the Tibetanness, like in the Tanka, when you see his paintings, the central part of his painting is the deity itself, you know, like if it is Chenrezig or Buddha, uh, Medicine Buddha or anything, but around it, he will, his um, offerings, maybe what I could say is offerings, are totally like contemporary. And so me and Kamala, we used to joke joke each other, say, you know, like, uh, uh, our art is like, we totally contemporary, yet we have a little bit of Tsampa in it, <laughs> you know, like the smell of Tsampa. <laughs> so, you know, like the essence, you can, you can kind of smell like the essence is there. Like if you if you hear my song, I'm pretty sure you will. Like a lot of people do say to me that it it takes them to some Tibetan world. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean to take them to Tibetan world. Uh, I was. I'm just sharing my uh, song, but. So it does have that, uh, what is that called? The essence of Tibetan in it, yet very contemporary in terms of like being in the century that we are living in now. So um, what what do you think? <laughs> Did I... Yeah, I totally agree. You know, there's this, um, this wonderful combination of the uh, of, of the Tibetan um, tradition, but at the same time, you know, kind of um, experimenting with all the global sounds, you know, um, that have surrounded you throughout your musical journey. Uh, so, yeah, and the result is just this beautiful sound, as you say, you know, it's not so much the words per se, but the very sound of your music in, um, that everyone, you know, no matter what their race is or what their musical understanding is, they can, you know, uh, follow your music and, you know, enjoy it. Uh, I'm talking about this, um, just as you were saying that, I remember when my daughter was, was newborn, literally, you know, as you know, that young babies, they wake up at night and they wake up yeah. you know, in the middle of the night and stay awake for two, three hours. And so, you know, in those um, few months um, of my daughter's life, you know, of course, as a mother, I was having lots of sleepless nights and there was one music um, that I used to go to, turn to constantly, and that was your music, you know. My daughter would wake up at two, in the morning and stay up, you know, for two, three hours, you know, so there I was in my apartment, you know, holding a newborn baby, not wishing that she would go to bed, but she wouldn't <laughs> stay up. She would stay up for two, three, four hours. So I would listen to, you know, mm, classical Indian music, you know, some of the classical music that, you know, I also used to enjoy listening to the Indian devotional music, and then I'll turn to your music as well. And so, yes, what I was trying to say that, you know, music is something that anybody, you know, can enjoy and you don't have to kind of know the language. Uh, so, and your music uh, shows that. Um, so, yes, I was just following uh, the comments that are coming through. 
and someone actually said, <laughs> I should now. Mm. Okay, cool. The, um, Kun Sang Doji, he's actually saying, I love your Ramaluk music. So, <laughs> so that's you. a cool. Uh, so for uh, yeah. non Tibetan friends um, who are tuning in, Ramaluk means, you know, it's neither, it's a, you know, well, Chugil, how would it's you neither, put it? Neither sheep, not, neither sheep or a goat. It's like a, what is that? Blend. You know, like a mix. It's like Five. in, 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 uh, in Aussie, in Aussie language, it would be like a mongrel. Okay. <laughs> so people do enjoy your Ramaluk hybrid music. So that's a compliment, Chugil. And <laughs> mm, so yes, you were talking about uh, Kama Pinzok. Uh, so I wanted yeah, to and I her. think actually we we should touch base with the uh, auction as well. Exactly. And. Uh, you know, Kama is a beautiful, beautiful friend of mine, and owning owning an art piece of him, I used to joke with joke with him. You know, like uh, I mean, he's like an elder brother to me, and um, so I used to joke joke with him, saying, you know, hey, Kamala, when you die, can you leave all your paintings for me, <laughs> so that I can become a rich bastard? Anyway, <laughs> so. Um, but um, actually, he is. One time, I took to tell uh, actually to tell a little story about his work. I was doing a concert in Long Island, mm -hmm. and I used to take his paintings with me so that I, when I go overseas, then I can make it as a back a backdrop for my stage, because I really love his uh, painting and the energy that brings by his painting. And so I was doing a concert in Long Island, and uh, I had this beautiful dotted uh, tara in the back of my, and then I did this two, one and a half hour full concert. And then in the middle of the concert, I said, oh, this this painting is, by the way, this painting is for sale, and if anyone wants to buy it, come. I had a concert the next day as well in the same uh, auditorium. and. What happened the next day was a huge, like, you know, like Lichtenstein, the pop artist. Mm -hmm. So Lichtenstein's wife, Dorothy Lichtenstein's, come up, comes to me the next day and said she couldn't go to sleep. Keep kept thinking she was she must have been in the concert the night before. So she said she couldn't go to sleep. She she kept thinking about the painting. This. And then she asked me how much it is, and I could I didn't know what to say, and I just like I didn't even ask Karma, and a, a thought popped in my head, and I said, "Oh, twenty grand, <laughs> just like that." I, and then she said, "Okay," she and I said, and beautifully she get she took it. Now it's in Lichtenstein's uh, home um, in Long Island. Um, but what Kama did was, since I sold it for 20 grand, she, he said, give 10 grand to Tibetan Children's Village and then 10 grand to himself. So that was super beautiful. Anyway, uh, one thing that I just wanted to say is, you know, Kama's work is actually collected in many places. And this is one small story that, um, kind of tells who, like, how people get drawn to his work. And um, so I'm pretty sure his, one of his paintings is with Lichtenstein's uh, uh, studio amongst Andy Warhol and all these places, <laughs> all these artists. I'm pretty sure she's a big collector. And um, so I think we have a, we have on the auction. We have uh, one of his painting, isn't it? So yeah, that's a nice segue into our into our auction, online auction. For those of you who are tuning in, you know, tonight we are having this conversation with Tenzin Chögyal, you know, a pioneer in Tibetan music. Um, at the same time, 
Australia Tibet Council has today launched an online, a small online option just to raise some funds um, as we all struggle, you know, with the coronavirus crisis and the, you know, um, economic um, damage that has come out of this. Uh, so um, we are talking about Kama Pyunzok, again, a very special Tibetan artist. Uh, Australia, I must say, is very lucky to have very, uh, you know, two very special Tibetan artists, Tenzin Chögyal and um, Kama Pinzok, Kama Pinzola. Unfortunately, he's not able to join us um, tonight because he has the most amazing, interesting life. <laughs> um, <laughs> he, is, <laughs> he moved to Australia 30 years ago, and for the last three decades, he has lived in a very small town in the bush without, I mean, he lives off the grid, basically, you know. Yeah. He, um, very inspiring, uh, like the way he lives. Uh, yeah. You know, spending all his time to his kind of meditative, contemplative practice in the form of art. And um, so, yes, it has always been my desire to visit him, uh, you know, in his place in the bush, Australian bush in northern New South Wales. Um, like Chögyal, uh, Kamala is also a very generous artist you know, always willing to share his art uh, with others. Um, and both of them, Chögyal and Kamala, have been generous supporters of ATC's work uh, over many, many years. And uh, today, as we launch this, um, um, this online auction, Kamala once again has donated one of his most beautiful uh, paintings to the auction. And this is the highlight of the auction. And I'm very pleased to show uh, what it is. Um, first, before that, I want to you know, just show a short video clip of Kamala. Kamala is, you know, someone, um, you know, who has um, come from, again, from a very traditional Tanga painting background, but, you know, over the years, again, you know, um, using uh, that traditional painting practice, uh, was able to kind of, you know, um, blend or introduce kind of contemporary uh, in the themes and um, uh, so yeah, I'll just stop it here and um, I'll show a short clip about Kamala's um, life before showing you the beautiful painting that uh, he has donated to us. So I was just trying to find where I have saved the Okay, we yeah, have saved a short clip of Kamala. Um, Chigil, can you? Tibetan paintings are usually used as a ritual uh, representation of Buddha. Normal families, they have the commission a painting because the, a child was born or things like that or somebody was really sick and they commissioned a painting. For higher purpose, it's used as an, a tool uh, for meditation. I remember seeing uh, bullets going past our compound. The Chinese started throwing hand grenades. My father carrying me to our siblings under his arm and running out in the middle of the night. We came into India. Everybody was really poor. We just left everything, thinking that we'll go back. That's when I sort of maybe became atheist because they came in and killed our people, took our land and so on. I had a lot of sort of Hate, you know, and at that time I remember him saying, Our Chinese brother and sister, even at that 1960s, early 60s, saying, uh, Don't don't hate them, you know, um, because having hate in you will sort of kill your own well being, your own happiness. So, um, you hear me? So yeah, that's uh, that's Kamala, uh, you know, ending with that beautiful message uh, about love. Um, and um, and so what I want to do now is 
show you the painting uh, that Kamala has donated to the ADC auction. So bear with me for a second while I bring up the screen. Chukil, can you see that? Yes, we can. And it's a beautiful, beautiful painting of uh, Chenrezig, the four-armed Chenrezig. And for Tibetans, uh, the human manifestation of Chenrezig is His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And um, yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful painting. And what is what is the size of that painting? Do you know? Uh -huh. A good question. It is uh, 56 by 75 centimeters, and the oh. material is acrylic polymer on Belgium linen. Linen, yeah. So, yeah, as you can see, it's a beautiful, the detail, the color, uh, yeah, it's, it's just beautiful. And this is the key um, item in our, in our auction. Um, so, so yeah, yeah don't miss out on bidding because it as you know what the size of this is now so you can check where to put maybe and mm. start bidding and yeah. also if you if you look at uh, Kama's painting the central deity like whenever whenever he paints the central deity is exactly according to the traditional um, like the uh, norms and then mm -hmm. around it is like totally so beautifully like evoke, evoking all these beauties like a painting that brings out uh, all the beauties um, within yourself too when you look at it so I'm pretty um, Totally stoked that he donated this to you uh, to aid Australia Tibet Council, and I'm super happy. I'll be super happy whoever gets gets this painting. Yeah, definitely. It's it's just. I mean, I I can't keep you know kind of looking at all the detail and admiring every single detail. You know, um, the flowers, the petals, the colors. It's just beautiful. And yes, it's uh, it's amazing how. Um, what you just said about you know the deities when he does the in the Buddhist deities he makes sure that he maintains the accuracy, um, you know uh, that commitment to to his uh, tradition while yeah. at the same time you know being very experimental and bringing you know the surrounding you know his natural surrounding or in his uh, or if sometimes I remember he um, you know paints a group of you know beautiful. Uh, Tara's, you know, walking on the streets of <laughs> yeah. like Melbourne. So yes, it's amazing what he does with his art. So yes, the, um, we have put a starting bid, uh, nine hundred dollars on this. Um, Kamala said, you know, the value can be something like one thousand seven hundred fifty. But of course, you know, if you are a supporter of 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 um, ATC, if you are a supporter of Tibet, um, and if you can afford, please <laughs> feel free to bid more than that. Because as Chugil said, it is a very good investment. Um, so it's basically priceless, I would say. Even though Kamala has given us a value um, of this painting, uh, you know, as far as I can see, it's it's. It's, it's priceless. So please enjoy this painting for a moment. <laughs> and yeah. while you enjoyed that, Chugil, I was going to read uh, some messages that are coming on Facebook. Um, someone, Carrie NG, hi Carrie NG, uh, who said, I was fortunate enough to win one of Kama Pinzola's painting at the last ATC online auction. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you, ATC. Uh, thanks, Carrie. Um, and then I remember seeing quite a beautiful message that one of our members, dear members, Sue, hi Sue, Sue Jeffries, um, beautiful message to you, Tizen Chugil, um, saying it was magic listening to you playing at Uluru Sunshine. Oh, yeah. His holiness visited there. Tenzin, mm -hmm. you will always be tied to that beautiful time for me. Thank you. Yeah. That's a beautiful message. Um, Sue, and thanks for joining us. Um, and then, hi, hi, uh, Jeannie, Jeannie Wicks saying, your Snow Line song was the first ever Tibetan music I have heard. 
I'm very English, <laughs> but I loved it and it still moves me deeply. I totally agree, Jeannie. Snow Line is also one of my uh, favorites. Um, it's a pity that we can't really have Tenzin um, playing uh, his songs with us tonight. As I said, you know, um, because of this video conferencing platform, when it is live streamed on Facebook, the quality um, of the sound it's, gets completely compromised. We'll think, of, we'll think of some another different medium later on, but definitely uh, we'll do a song or two later in some way, some another time for a Australia Tibet Council. But I was just thinking about this painting. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like um, as Kamala used to say, you know, whenever I think when whenever he paints, he actually whatever deity he is painting, he will do while he is painting the deity, he will actually collect the mantras of that deity as he's painting. So it's like, so while he's painting, probably while he was painting this Chenrezig, he would have been doing the uh, Chenrezig mantra all time during the painting. So it's induced with his, or his own energy and, you know, like so much love goes in his painting. And, um, and also one beautiful thing about his paintings is that it does show where he comes from, the bush that he lives in. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So that's beautiful. Then um, I thought maybe we can uh, think of another question for you, Chogil. And yes, for those of you who are watching, if you have any questions to Tim Chogil, uh, please feel free to um, ask your questions and I will raise them with Chogil. Um, now, um, Yes, the other thing I wanted to know from you is, is your metok, is your friend, oh, your yeah, yeah. metok. <laughs> because <laughs> wherever you go, you go with this big you know, cake, as yeah. this beautiful Tibetan instrument. And, uh, and you have given such a beautiful name to this instrument. So if you can please introduce metok to us all. Definitely, yeah. Um, so in Tibetan, Tibetan, it's called, like the name of the instrument is Drangin for all the instruments, like guitar, for all the guitars. But then I really wanted to, because since I spent almost a lot of time with my instrument, so uh, I have a very personal relationship with her. And that's why I called her, I named her Meto, Meto meaning flower. And... Um, and then, um, so I'll just, for those who haven't heard the sound of the metal, I'll just give you a little sound, like. So this is the sound of metal, and it's called drangen uh, in Tibetan, like the guitar. And I have a lot of friends on my metal wherever I go. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so it doesn't fit in the screen. The metal is <laughs> metal doesn't fit in the screen, but it's okay. I'll. Um, <clears throat> Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, and uh, yeah, Meto is like she goes with me everywhere where I go. Um, and like, uh, who was that lady? Sue was talking mm -hmm. about Uluru, mm -hmm. and that's that was the time when his like I've never I've never got I've always wanted to go to Uluru, but. I didn't want it to go there as a tourist. So uh, when His Holiness went there, visited Uluru, 
and then I found a purpose like and that's when I went and and I remember what she's talking about because I took my metal with me and sat looking at the looking at Uluru from distance and I offered a song from the distance early in the morning I think it was like six in the morning or something I went for a walk and I did a like a spontaneous song as an offering to the Uluru for Ulu, for all the indigenous brothers and sisters around here Uluru is a sacred mountain like for Tibetans Mount Kailash is a sacred mountain so um, as a respect I offered a song and that's when I think uh, Sue was it Sue saw me sing in the morning I think she must have been there at that no like that early morning yeah, beautiful. <laughs> yes. Um, the, now I'd like to uh, ask you um, one last question, and which is um, uh, which is about your um, latest collaboration, your latest album. Yeah. Songs from the Parto. Yeah. Um, so yes, again, it's amazing how you have. Um, managed to do this musical interpretation of a very classic Buddhist text. Uh, mm. So yes, can you please tell us about your latest uh, album, Songs from yeah, the Pardo? Um, Songs from the Pardo is a collaboration that I did with Laurie Anderson. Uh, those, for those who know the music world, then probably will know Laurie Anderson. And then uh, Jesse Perry Smith and Ruben Cordelia, and <clears throat> I had this. Uh, I've been doing this so, uh, Tibetan Book of the Dead interpretation in Australia for the last fifteen years or so, and then four years ago I went to New York, and then songs from the Pardo is like Pardo Pardo Turtle has been a huge practice for me um, since uh, when. When my sister's husband passed away, uh, for Tibetans you have to you read the Pardo Todo, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, uh, to overcome um, like for the the one who has departed. So in in this in this uh, collaboration, what I have done is we the Lori is narrating the um, text from the Pardo Todo. Uh, the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Uh, so that's why we called it Songs from the Pardo. Uh, and then it's like, it's got some musical interludes and underscoring uh, in the narration. And the, it gives it gives the listener a beautiful time to contemplate a little bit uh, before the next story comes in uh, of this. Um, and it's a very beautiful, beautiful, uh, I'm I'm super proud of it, and I actually uh, even more proud because uh, this is the only album that actually I let go and uh, had a record label to put it out. And the record label that has put it out is the Smithsonian Record Label from uh, the Folkways, and it's so it's quite a um, what is that called for me? Quite an achievement to have a have Smithsonian uh, putting it out, you know, like it's uh, not, mm, and uh, so I'm pretty sure for the next thousand years, if I know I will, I will go away, I will die one day, but I'm pretty sure this work will stay in Smithsonian's archival for next thousand years. So um, it's a beautiful interpretation and I've been We've been getting lots of messages from people uh, like uh, I know one of my friends actually you know Elijah when uh, Elijah MacLeod when his mom passed away he he asked me to send the album and he said it was really really helpful for him to go through so um, I have actually gifted uh, songs from the Pardo and a couple of other albums like uh, my latest album with Tib uh, Tibet to Timbuktu, Abu Gaga, and then a couple of my old albums. I think there's four CDs, isn't it? 
Yeah. Four albums. So, yeah. Yeah. So mm, this is the mm, album songs from the Parto, uh, Tenzin Chögyal's latest album. And as uh, you just said, um, Chögyal has donated, uh, has sent us four of his. Um, the most special albums to us to be included in this online auction. So please visit um, this online auction. Uh, you can either follow the link um, that um, is there on the Facebook comment section or visit uh, the ATC website. Uh, you'll see that on the home page. Uh, the ATC website is atc.org.au. Um, yeah. So yes, yeah, sorry, you were about to say something. Yeah, so I'm I'm really, really proud of this album. I'm pretty sure, you know, whoever hears it, I've tried my best to take out all the, like, um, I've even, you know, like in the text, normally the, uh, it says, the in the actual text, it says, uh, oh, son of noble birth. Um, so I, I, I made sure that it's in the, 21st contemporary sense. So instead of son of noble birth, I have changed the text to the awakened one, meaning that, you know, like um, everyone has the seat of enlightenment. And mm. so it's talking to everyone, you know, like when the, when you listen to it, I think I'm pretty sure it, you will feel like as if the, the song is talking directly to you each mm. of the pieces so yeah. um it's a 90 minute it was a two hour long one but uh for the album uh we had to cut it down to 78 minutes so uh, i have got the two hour long one version at, in my uh, computer but uh, you can enjoy the 78 minute one whoever get like it's it's a beautiful album so um pretty stoked whoever gets it it will be a beautiful journey for the listener yes and uh, speaking of uh, parto um, todel which is the tibetan word for the english um, version the tibetan book of the dead you know as chegel was saying this is the most uh, let's say the most important buddhist text for dying parto and rebirth you know parto means the intermediate state between um, death and rebirth. And so this ancient text is a guide um, for, you know, Buddhist practitioners to embrace death and transition the consciousness to another life through rebirth. And I also want to acknowledge, um, you know, the contribution that one of our supporters, um, Je Jeffrey, uh, has made. He donated his book, uh, The Tibetan Book of the Dead, to this auction and Jeffrey, thank you for that and send a beautiful um, moving message. And I just want to read it uh, to you all. Um, when Jeffrey sent this book uh, to be included in this auction, he said, you know, I read it. Um, he said this book, um, I, I bought it for my mother. I read from it as she was dying. So I'm offering this up for the auction. It's an opportunity to practice non-attachment my mother would have approved. Um, so yes, just wanted to share that. Um, so while we were talking about, you know, parto, death, rebirth, uh, I thought, Chögyal, maybe I can talk about um, some of the more kind of religious objects uh, that have been donated for this auction. And mm -hmm. one item that I would like to draw your attention to is the beautiful, um, beautiful um, tanga painting uh, you know many of you will already be familiar with what a tanga is it is the buddhist you know scroll painting um, so there was one that came to us which was simply beautiful so i just want to bring then bring that up on the screen um, and i let me just share that and can you see it yeah but the screen is yep that's better. So, yes, yeah, so, so who, this is uh, uh, who donated um, that? So, again, it's from one of our members, uh, one of our supporters who bought it some 30, 40 years ago in 1978 uh, in Kathmandu. Uh, so, you can see it's quite a 
uh, quite an old piece, beautiful uh, old piece. Um, it's a mandala and a Mahakala uh, Tanga painting. Yeah. Uh, Mahakala, mandala, as you know, you know, is it represents the universe, you know, um, and um, and and inside the mandala is is the um, is the Mahakala. Um, so Chugil, would you like to say a little bit about, I think you'll be more familiar with these Buddhist and deities and objects. Well, I, can. I, can't, I can't really see exactly because the painting is so small, but uh, Mahakala is, is the, manifest, the wrathful manifestation of Chenrezig. Um, <clears throat> So if you if you see the deity, like in the center is the deity, Mahakala. So it's the wrathful manifestation of the Chenrezig. Uh, the Chenrezig, most of you probably know, Chenrezig is the Buddha of compassion, and it um, he can be depicted in four-armed Chenrezig or thousand-armed Chenrezig. So um, yeah, and then it also appears in the like uh, Mahakala also appears in um, like when when we go through the transition of between leaving this body and taking a new body, the transition of 49 days, um, we say that Mahakala, in Tibetans we say that, you know, like Mahakala will come. If you have uh, practiced enough, then it's a really um, good, thing for he comes in in the protection uh, of your uh, in your visions like uh, during that transition time like uh, the pardo time you know the and i guess you know like we all are in the at the moment uh, talking about pardo <laughs> um the, you know like before this coronavirus came and like what the time that we are living now, it all it all feels like for me it all feels like a pardo, you know, like living in a pardo, you know, the pardo of pardo that has cre been created by this um, uh, invisible virus. We can't even see it, so um, we are all trying to, you know, be reborn again uh, with without. Uh, being affected by this invisible thing. Uh, so I hope you all are being safe and uh, sound and uh, all, all our prayers to you all. Um, but please keep safe. This pardo will also pass and we will be, will be totally fine uh, when, once we cross this pardo. <clears throat> Thank you for that. Now, I mean, we have gone past one hour, so I want to wrap up uh, in the next few minutes. But before doing that, I do want to show two other uh, beautiful items that are available in our auction. Number one, I uh, just want to share this. Um... Can you see that? Yep. Yeah. So this is Tibetan rock. Uh, in, in, in Tibetan, we say Thing from so um, you know, uh, Tibetan rock making is an ancient Tibetan craft, uh, and um, and what is special about this uh, rock, Tibetan rock, is that um, uh, one of our supporters has donated this to us, and it was used when His Holiness the Dalai Lama was at, was giving um, a teaching in Sydney many years ago. And so it was used for the stage um, where His Holiness's throne was um, put, and His Holiness has actually done his prostration on on this um, on this rock. Uh, so let's say it's a very blessed uh, rock. And if you would like to add a bit of Tibetan warmth or serenity to your lounge room, um, I think this is a beautiful piece. So please uh, take the time to check out uh, our auction site. Uh, you can visit our website um, atc.org.au and from there uh, visit the auction page. Um, and one last thing uh, from the auction that I want to show again. Um, this is the highlight of the auction. 
Um, this is uh, the Potala Palace. It's again a uh, Tibetan rug. Uh, it's primarily a wall hanging, which can also be used as a floor rug. And it has got um, the Potala Palace. Many of you will know the Potala Palace, you know, the Winter Palace of his Holland's Dalai Lama, Winter Palace of all the Dalai Lamas in Tibet, um, and therefore the seat uh, of a free and independent uh, Tibet for the Chinese uh, occupation in 1950. Um, so this is a very special rug. Uh, you know, the Potala Palace today has become um, a tourist destination for the middle class Chinese um, Middle, middle class Chinese, so you know, it is sad, but then you know, look at this imposing building, uh, the former seat of the uh, independent Tibet, um, and the winter palace of the Dalai Lamas. And again, what the special story uh, about this rug, it, it has been donated to us by a very special uh, supporter of ATC, or, or rather of Tibet. Uh, and I want to um, bring up their photo. Can you see that, Chugi? Yeah, uh, Paul yes. and our, our beautiful friend Paul and Bob here. Yeah, so, you know, you will know uh, Bob Brown and Paul, B Bob and his partner Paul. Um, Bob, um, a long-term supporter of Tibet, um, the former uh, leader of the Greens, or rather the founder of the Greens Party in Australia, um, you know, a long term, because of him, you know, we, the Greens have a long standing, have a long established tradition of supporting the Tibet people. And looking at all the three political parties in Australia, you know, um, the Greens is the only party, um, you know, who in their resolution has, you know, clearly mentioned that they support the Tibetan right to self-determination. So Bob Brown is one of the, um, or one of, or was one of the um, very first Western politicians to visit Tibet in the 1980s, early 1980s. Uh, so I just wanted to share that story here. Um, and also actually Paul has been supporting a lot of the Tibetan um, carpet makers in from Kathmandu and from Nepal. Like uh, Paul used to have a carpet, uh, uh, what is that called? A beautiful store in uh, Tasmania. Mm -hmm. And he used to support, like he used to support all this. You know, like uh, in in Kathmandu, we, like a lot of the Tibetan refugees live there. So, uh, and the, most of the actually incomes are from either making carpets or being, part of the, you know, like the carpet uh, industry over there. So mm -hmm. it's a beautiful, um, I think it's a beautiful piece uh, uh, that they donated. So thank you to Paul and Bob. Um, all right, so I'm just looking at some of the questions. I don't think there is anything in particular. Uh, there are a few comments, um, John Walker saying, Trigger's music is also available on Spotify and has over 60,000 listens. Um, uh, someone, a Tibetan, Demo Wangela is saying, where is Australia Tibet Council? Uh, we are a national organization, you know, campaigning organization uh, for Tibet um, with members across Australia. And uh, the staff um, and many of our board members are based in Sydney. Mm. Uh, and Kinzum, you are doing such a great job, actually, like to all the campaigns that, um, you know, amplifying Tibet in the parliament and in the grassroots levels. Um, so thank you for that. And also, if anyone out there uh, who doesn't know much about the Australia Tibet Council's work, then please visit um, the Australia Tibet Council website. And also, Kinzom is very, what is that called, uh, forthcoming and uh, easy to reach. So you can reach out to her and um, have a chat with her how you can be involved in the works of Australia Tibet Council. Um, it's one of, you know, like, it's the only, actually, in Australia, it's the only 
it's the only uh what what is it called like the group tibet support group you know uh we have many tibetan communities now but uh like in melbourne sydney uh, each but we have only one uh actually a tibet support group that actually campaigns for tibet in the parliament and also goes down um into the grassroots levels and you know uh, amplify tibet in that way so anyone who can give a hand that would be super awesome and thanks to kingdom like really uh um it it must feel sometimes it must feel that you know like um working working solo you know like when you are working so hard by yourself looking after your own family at the same time you know like juggling um to do all this campaign works must be a little uh daunting at times but uh uh i mean the results are showing so thanks for that thank you thank you for that so um so I think um, we can end here. I want to, you know, thank everyone for joining us today, and I hope uh, you have, you know, enjoyed listening uh, to the stories behind uh, Tenzin Chigil's music. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry that we are not able to play any of his music tonight because of the technical uh, limitations. Uh, but I'm sure, you know, when this whole coronavirus thing is over, Chugil will be on the road uh, performing for all of us. Uh, and, you know, as Chugil has demonstrated, you know, every crisis is, is an opportunity to, you know, uh, to, to create something new, to be creative uh, um, and to build a better world, uh, you know, for everybody, uh, not just for the few, but for everybody. And this includes uh, the people of Tibet, uh, you know, Tibetan people. Uh, have fought against the injustice uh, and the oppression in our homeland for the last 70 years. And, you know, um, and so we really hope that, you know, in the post-pandemic world, uh, Tibetans can see a better future. Um, you know, we have never seen, it's a huge uh, moment for the Tibet movement. You know, we don't often see such opportunities when China has been under such um, scrutiny, you know, such um, international scrutiny. And here in Australia, we are seeing that, you know, the relationship, the Australian uh, Chinese relationship has never been so, um, never, has never been under greater scrutiny. Um, oh. So we are hoping that, you know, our leaders, uh, business leaders, political leaders will, you know, think long term and that when we begin this path, um, you know, to economic recovery, uh, we, you know, build a path that is sustainable, and that is fair, and that is kind to everybody, and and hope that you know it won't be back to business as usual with China. Uh, so yeah. this is a huge moment for all of us. Uh, you know, to build a better world, to build a more fair world uh, for, Tib for the Tibetans uh, and for everyone who have really suffered under the Chinese Communist Party. Um, so with that in mind, um, I want to thank everyone and those of you who are not um, on the Australia Tibet Council mailing list, please join us, um, you know, straight after this, join us, sign up to ATC mailing list, which means you will get emails about our campaigns and the various ways in which you can take part. You know, we have a range of coming, it's, it's going to be a huge campaign year for us. Um, you know, every year is important for us. And, you know, this year in particular, uh, we have lined up so many um, campaign activities for the coming year. Uh, but of course, many of these have to be put on hold because of the coronavirus situation. But that said, you know, um, there are so many things uh, that you can still do online. Um, the one that is upcoming next month is the Tibet Lobby Week, which is an extension of our annual Tibet Lobby Day. So please sign up um, to ATC mailing list and, you know, join us, join us in this movement for a free Tibet. So thank you, everyone. And I want to once again thank Chugil, you know, for your music. Uh, 
you know, for your generosity um, you. and, you know, bringing so much joy to so many people uh, around the world through your music. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. And also embrace the unknown. Because when you don't know something, then you know that you are creating, you are going to create something new. So please stay on and keep safe and love you all. And uh, see you with my music someday very soon. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Okay. Yeah, we'll chance. Yeah, we'll chance. Ah, what's that? Yeah, we'll chance. Ah, delay, yeah, do I, yeah,